Welcome to the Daily Word for the season of Pentecost. Today's reading is from the first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 17 to 25. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. The Folly of the Cross The letter to the Corinthians is sadly set amongst division in the church, and it appears at the start of Paul's letter, the concern is with Christian preachers. The Corinthians' pride has led them to value the appearance and powerful speaking over the genuine work of the Spirit. Instead, Paul reminds us how we should work together for the advancement of the gospel by repenting of rivalries so they may build up the church and witness effectively to unbelievers. Our passage today opens with contrast in verse 17 on the contrast between the wisdom of men and the power of God. It is a reminder for us that mere intellectual persuasion does not save people. Saving faith is produced by the heart-changing power of the gospel that is preached. It is a wonderful encouragement of the power that the cross holds over sin. Baptism is of course a central part of our membership and spiritual tradition, but Paul identifies it it must not become primary over preaching the gospel. Likewise, in the ancient Greco-Roman world, words of eloquent wisdom were highly valued and it will be a credit to the church, but Paul identifies how they might have some adverse effects on our faith. Professional lecturers came to large cities like Corinth and Paul states his preaching was not as impressive as these men's speeches, but his preaching focuses on the power of the message itself. The message Paul chose to focus on without eloquence, he says, was that of the cross in verse 18. He states this preaching of the apostle is a folly to those who are perishing. This is because the method of execution was considered so crude It was not even mentioned in polite company. The Roman historian Josephus mentions thousands of people crucified in the first century Palestine, mostly for rebellion against the empire. Crucifixion was of course considered the worst form of execution due to the excruciating pain and shame. The victim would eventually suffocate due to the bodies hanging under its own weight and the exhaustion of the arms and legs. And yet through this crude and horrific event that would not be mentioned in society, God chose to save the world. For those who are being saved, 
it is the power of God. When the world looks at the cross, it can only comprehend nonsense or humiliation. And indeed, those who believe in the cross, as we do in the church, are judged to be foolish by the world's standards. We are told the inverse nature of God's kingdom, that men and women are saved through wisdom. This contrasts with the world which doesn't understand it, and Paul says is lost. Where is the one who is wise? The Bible tells us it is the one who recognizes the cross. This also contrasts with the two main groups of the day, the Jews and the Greeks. The Jews sought spiritual signs, as we see evidenced in the gospel, asking Jesus for the sign of Jonah. The important distinction here is the nuance in the Greek that in the Greek and the Jews were demanding signs. Jesus, however, told them that his words and his works were self-authenticating. And while many modern people today will, will seek a sign to believe, we must be reminded that no sign but the sign of Christ will ever be enough. The Greeks, on the other hand, were looking for wisdom as their sages promoted. This was a wisdom that came from man and tends to glorify human being. Paul critiques the famous ancient philosopher's approach as a folly, for they think they are wise compared to their foolish message. Real wisdom is found in the message of the cross that we believe, and in believing so, we may grasp the wisdom of God. The cross and the resurrection is the sign and proof that Jesus is the one chosen by God to bring in the new covenant. It is through his death, through that, our penalties have also been paid. When we come to him and enter into his death through baptism, and this is our sign too, it is in baptism and by faith that we accept the death of Jesus as our own and are likewise resurrected as new creations in Christ. It is by baptism that we are truly born again of water to be prepared to receive the Holy Spirit so that we can be transformed into the image of Jesus. Let us have a time of reflection. How can we keep the cross at the center of our lives? Where are we tempted to exchange the cross for signs or wisdom? How does Paul tell us the cross saves people? Let us pray. Lord, help us to keep the message of the cross at the center of our lives, that we would truly be wise. Forgive us for when we are tempted by the wisdom of the world. Help us to proclaim this message in our words and deeds plainly, that the church could be strengthened and built up. Amen.